All right, good evening. 7 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is the June 27th <coughs> Trinity County Planning Commission meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, public comment. Members of the public may address the Planning Commission concerning matters within our jurisdiction, but you're not listed on the agenda and you request that the matter be agendized for a future meeting. No action may be taken on these matters at this meeting. Is there anyone who would care to address the commission? Sorry. Good evening. My name is Dan DeVuti, and I'm from Hayfork. Um, I'm addressing the commission tonight because the situation at the dump, the transfer station in Hayfork, is dismal, uh, to put lightly. Um, there's constant vandalism from members of the community at the Hayfork transfer station. Locks are broken all the time. The trash is always picked through. Um, I feel like we need to try to find a way to apply for a USDA Rural Development Grant to get some funds to improve the conditions of the transfer station in Hayfork. I've called Diane Rader at Solid Waste numerous times about this, and I really feel like if we could mobilize some mechanisms internally in the county to improve the conditions of the dump in Hayfork that it would impact the community in an extremely positive way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Commission. Justin Hawkins from Hayfork. Um, I just wanted to real quickly touch on um, some of my thoughts I had after going to the uh, draft EIR for cannabis um, meeting, and it was already obvious to me that I listened to the comments from planning staff and the uh, consultant Ascent, and it's clear if you read very far in the document that they are mixing and matching illegal cultivation impacts and legal cultivation impacts. And I think all of you have been in this process since the beginning, I recognize most of you when we first started the cultivation process to get licenses in this county, it was to mitigate the impacts from illegal cultivation. And the first thing you had to do to get into the county program was to get a water board enrollment. Right? The North Coast Water Board program is, was very restrictive, and it, impl and it imposed mitigation measures that by themselves are CEQA compliant. Okay? It, if you comply with the order, you are within CEQA. You were compliant. And it, it's even more robust with the new state cannabis order. Um, many things that actually are required in that program, that you have to have that permit, are again noted in the EIR. In fact, almost, I would say over half of the mitigations in that document are already required through an LSA or the water board enrollment or a you know, three acre conversion. They literally stacked the document and padded it. And when asked the other night in Hayfork why, it was so that they could <clears throat> ensure that county staff was aware of all the requirements. Now, I'll be honest, I think that this county now recently has the ability to regulate groundwater, but they're not in charge of surface water in this county. And yet, I mean, almost they have mitigations, including forbearance for surface water diversion. And if you read the details, they're mixing and matching illegal cultivation and legal cultivation in there because you can't divert surface water if you're legally cultivating. It's got so many times where the two are mixed and matched, it's unbelievable. And I think the greatest example is that they want to use the priority watersheds, which are from the Cal Cannabis Reg, section 8216, that talk about impacted watersheds, which the South Fork of the Trinity and Hay Fork Creek in particular are part of that watershed that's impacted. The impacts to those watersheds are not from legal cultivation, because if you are legally cultivating, you have to be enrolled in the water board order following their very restrictive uses, including forbearance of surface water, pesticide use, that's a discharge permit, okay? But it also includes the extraction of water, surface, and ground in the new water board order. It takes care of all the water situations we can come up with for the most part. <clears throat> They're using the impact of priority watersheds that are talked about and not defined by Fish and Wildlife and the Water Board. They've done one study, I read it, 
I've read it twice now, in the Upper Mithole Watershed, where they're trying to tease apart uses for illegal and illegal legal and illegal cultivation by within watersheds. You can't do it because we don't know where all the waters are. They're trying to use that priority watershed, which has impacts to water and fish and wildlife, to mitigate air, noise, and traffic impacts that are unmitigated according to the DIR. They're trying to mitigate for those unmitigatable impacts according to the DEIR, air, noise, and traffic, with a program that's designed to mitigate against illegal cultivation and water and biological impacts. It doesn't make sense. So I hope that the commission takes some time to look at this and actually notice how often illegal and legal cultivation uses are mixed and matched. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Lisa Wright from Lewiston. Good to see you all, and thank you for your continued dedication and hard work for um, our area. I want to address this evening um, a recent determination that was made by the planning department in writing to a prospective buyer of a parcel located close to the Trinity County Fairgrounds that the fairgrounds is to be included in the 1,000 set, uh, foot, foot setback requirement that's part of our cannabis cultivation ordinance. So if we reference ordinance number 315A43, there is a section number five, limitation on location to cultivate cannabis. Now it includes uh, a point A, small i, within 1,000 feet of a youth-oriented facility, a school, any church, or residential treatment facility as defined herein. So let's take a look at what the fairground, how the fairground fits into those definitions. Number one, is it a church? I don't think so. Number two, is it a residential treatment facility, meaning treatment of drug and alcohol dependency? I don't think so. Is it a school or an institution for learning for minors, whether public or private? It's not. Is the fairgrounds a youth-oriented facility, which means, let's look at this a little bit closer, public park, school, authorized bus stop, or any establishment that advertises in a manner that identifies the establishment as catering to or providing services primarily intended for minors. Does the fairgrounds do that? Is it an establishment that does that? I don't think so. Or individual, the individuals who regularly patronize, congregate, or assemble at the establishment are predominantly minors. Now, the Trinity Grounding Fairgrounds isn't really an establishment, it's an event center. And it, it would be patronized by people of all ages, mixed. I don't think we could say predominantly, um, predominantly the youth. It is really uh, our interpretation that this interpretation of the Trinity County Fairgrounds as fitting into that definition is inaccurate and could, could potentially impede um, some, some very uh, important economic development opportunity for Hayford, which is desperately needed. If you take a look at the Trinity County Fairgrounds, in addition, it includes areas like the dump. I mean, how far are we going to go if that is the interpretation um, that the planning department has come up with? It also does not address whether, let's just give it the fact that, okay, we'll accept that that is, does fit into that definition, which we don't agree with, but let's just say we do, then where does that setback, uh, how is it measured? Is it measured from what, a building? What building? Is it measured to the cultivation area? Is it treated like you would treat a dwelling setback from a cultivation area? It probably, you should probably be consistent in your, in your definition of measurements. It has, it has been indicated that the planning department's interpretation may be property line to property line, which could potentially exclude a very large uh, prospective site that's perfectly designed and zoned for cannabis use. I would take it one step further. Under that interpretation, if you're going to say that any spot on the fairgrounds, which would go to the property line, would be considered a youth-oriented facility, um, perhaps, because children might appear in the parking lot or congregate there somehow, then you really have to take it to the extent of setbacks have to be from roadways because children go along on roadways, right? They're in, in cars traveling. So I would like this commission really to, prior to having this be an appeal because the license has been denied by the planning director, we've been told that will happen um, at this particular location, is for you to agendize and rule on the interpretation of the fairgrounds as fitting into those definitions required under the thousand foot setback. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, commissioners and staff. Um, John Brower from Junction City. Um, <clears throat> the previous uh, speakers touched on really important subjects, and I want to follow up a little bit. It, of, I think the greatest importance is this draft of the programmatic EIR for our Canvas Permitting Program. And, uh, it's long, it's not exciting reading, but it's important. It's really important to our community and and moving, continuing to move forward with all the hard work we've already got into this program. And so I just want to encourage uh, the commissioners to take your time reading it and uh, be prepared for this, these discussions, which are coming up soon. Uh, it seems that uh, August could be... Um, this could be coming before you. And the cannabis community that is moving forward with licensing has a lot of problems with this document. The, the, I won't go through them now, but I just want to encourage you to be well read and, and well versed in this document because we hope to open it up and uh, really turn it into what it can be. Um, in regards to uh, what Lisa just spoke of, um, the Planning Commission, at the last Planning Commission meeting, I believe uh, directed staff to agendize a Planning Commission discussion <coughs> of variances and setbacks in general. And uh, this was in the context, if I remember right, might have been Commissioner Matthews that brought it up to staff, or I think directed staff, as you were acting as the chair, or sorry, Dan was acting as chair, but to, uh, that. The commission has already made a decision regarding uh, and offered a recommendation regarding cannabis setbacks on agriculturally zoned parcels. And the <coughs> recommendation was to um, pull them way back um, to um, the normal agricultural setbacks on an agricultural parcel. Um, so in addition to staff uh, agendizing that discussion for the commission, it seems like they could also include this discussion that Lisa just mentioned about the fairgrounds. Uh, these are important matters, and uh, we really need your help. Thank you. Mr. Brower, just one quick follow -up. All those comments you have on the DEIR are being submitted in writing, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think... Um, That's how they get into the record for... Yes, the and there will likely be many, many pages of comments to that. Right. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, seeing no one coming forward, we'll close public comment and move on to the next item, which is to review minutes of two prior meetings, uh, April 25 and May 9. Uh, I think we were all at both meetings, so we can treat this as one item. Any comments on April 25? Okay, sir. Uh, let's see, page four, second large paragraph, fourth line, towards the end, talking about the modification of the Army Conditional Use Permit, which at that point <coughs> you would be drawing the Conditional Use Permit, it should be withdrawing, I believe. Where are you? Fourth line down, okay. Fourth line to the second large paragraph. Okay. Well, I think drawing makes any sense, I don't know how you draw a Conditional Use Permit. And then on the next page, end of the second paragraph, it says that he would like to inedible. And I think it's supposed to be inaudible. Okay. <laughs> I want to do injectables here. Very good. I, all right, chuckle noted. <laughs> Anything else? Those are my comments. Did, uh, did you catch those? Okay. Anybody else on uh, May 25th? I beg your pardon, April 25th. I have one on page 9. Second line from the bottom of the page. It said that uh, the decision, decision by the director, this would fundamentally be a minor change. Oh, yes, 
That should that word except should be accept. That's what that word should be. Anything else on April 25? Okay, how about May 9th? For you. Page three, the first complete paragraph, right in the middle of it, the word principal should be the word principal. Uh, right here in the, this paragraph, which is the first full paragraph. Okay, and then on the uh, first sentence of the penultimate paragraph on that page, Chair McHugh says he thinks. She's addressing is why there's a prohibition on water, and I think that should have been a prohibition on water haulings. I don't think we're gonna have a prohibition on water, at least not yet. Anything else, Commissioner? Okay, motion. Um, I make a motion to approve the minutes as amendment amended for April 25th. 2019 and amended for May 9th, 2019. Thank you. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, there being no old business, we'll move on to new business. Item number four. Is a proposed mitigated neck deck and cannabis conditional use permit. Proposed uh, said declaration of permits are for cannabis manufacturing, nursery, and distribution located at 3001 Morgan Hill Road in Hayport. APN 017 430 49. Applicant is the Valley of Plenty LLC. Good evening, commissioners. Is this on? It is. It is on. Before you get into this too far, um, part of what this item is going to request us to do is approve an IS. And um, the staff report specifically says that the IS is in the staff report. It does say but that. I have not seen the, the IS. When our administrative coordinator sent the IS out, Did you note that link and did you read the IS? Yeah. I don't think we can prove an item where we don't have the IS. So there was no notice that. Yeah. The problem is that even if the notice is there, that not all of us open up and if we make note of the fact that, okay, it's here, the document's going to be coming. I'll look at the agenda. <coughs> um, so if there's something that strikes me, I'll look at that particular item. But I'm not looking for links. Okay. One of the uh, one of the problems with this is the IS. Right. And that was the reason. Yeah. Now, would you still want a hard copy of this? No. Or a PDF. You're saying that what you're saying is you want a PDF. In what form would you like it? Well, it's not just me. Well, all of you. In what form would you like it? My preference would be the hard copy, so I can study it, mark it up, yeah. deal with it. But I would go with what the general consensus of the commission is. I could deal with it as a as a PDF, but but it would be awfully long as a PDF. I'm not sure. And it was too big. Yeah. Could get yeah, and it was too big for us to send as a PDF. Yeah. That's why the link was yeah. And 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 I understand that now that I know I can be looking for it, but but I'm not sure that 
I'm not sure what the value of it would be. Well, obviously there would be a value. Good market, I could really look at it, but um, but that's an awful lot for somebody to have to copy five times, put together, and then send to us. And this is very unfortunate. We will provide it in whatever format you want. We just need to know. Other opinions? Would you like a hard copy or PDF? I, I don't. I, I do enjoy things hard copy because I can mark them up and, and whatnot. But uh, I mean, judging by the size of that, uh, I, perhaps uh, one solution would be to to specify or to clarify if something is attached or there is a link to make yeah, sure some, that some, is. Some way to really let us yes, know. Yes, like all letters uh, attaches a link. Please visit this. Or if you would like a hard copy, <coughs> let us know. Just some kind of mechanism for us to be 100 percent aware that. The item or the document is there or accessible to us. Sometimes. This is not something that has happened a lot before. In fact, I'm not sure it's happened it, at all before. It happened at our last meeting. Right, but that was that was the first time. Yeah, that was the first time. No, and that was why purposely I wanted you to come to it. Yeah. So if the link doesn't work, that's fine. We can give you hard copy. So, if the document is small enough, we can PDF it. In this case, we could not PDF it. My inclination is to continue it. None of the, none of the commission has studied the document. I thought I heard that correctly. Okay, so none of us have seen the document. Okay, so for future reference, which is, I understand that, for future reference, all secret documents that appear before you will be on the planning department's website. They always have been, they always, that's just the standard operating procedure. And I did mention that at the last meeting. And, and I remember you mentioning that. I, I, I actually do remember you saying that. But somehow it did not, it, it, did, it did not seem to me that I needed to be looking for a link. So, commissioners, it seems like the appropriate thing is continuous until we can decide that. Unless there's a better idea. I guess we can discuss that. I mean, that, this happened last at our last meeting. And, and what did you do last meeting? We still we still took action because basically we came to the conclusion that the summarization exactly. of the document within the staff exactly. report highlighted all of the things that needed to be mitigated. All all of the impacts were. I mean, it obviously didn't include the entire document, but it was the highlights of the document. So we felt there was enough information there to proceed. I personally would prefer to, to continue on with, not to continue this, this, this item, but to, to proceed with the discussion of this item. I'd like that as a motion. I'd like the commission to vote that that is the way we're going to operate. Should we uh, ask for clarification from council? Won't hurt. See if there's anything that we, uh, <laughs> if we broke the rules last month, we should know that. Or my other Throw them under the bus. I do think it is a threshold issue to taking action on this item. Is um, you, you have a, a summary of it, certainly in the staff report. Um, I can't tell you how that comports with the actual document or not, because I haven't seen the document itself. Um, I don't think there's any harm in hearing it, but taking action on it, I think, would best practice would be to have the document at least take a look at it, not necessarily have it studied to it very well, but. Well, have a document in front of you. So, why does that change your or does it? <laughs> I find it very awkward to do it. I agree, I find it very awkward to take action in the end of uh, approving a secret document, recommending to the board that they accept it. Or hopefully, they'll read it. And uh, if we haven't read it, with all due respect to the staff summary, I'm sure it's a good summary. So would your I mean, council suggest, since 
people have traveled here for this hearing, then we conduct the hearing. And if we, is, is there an option that you see as chair that we could? I believe we could have the hearing since it was noticed as a hearing. When we reach the end, we would have to think long and hard about taking action on it. Are there actions? There are a number of different actions. Uh, there's a number of elements in the, the parent looking for a single motion that proves all kinds of things. It's three different conditions, terms, I believe, a rezone, and a secret document. And they would all depend on the secret document. Okay. Um, why don't we continue with the public hearing? See how much, how far we can get tonight, and where that ends up. Folks are here to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Why don't you proceed with your staff report? Okay. So the applicant is here this evening as is his consultant. So he may be able to answer any more um, in depth questions that you have regarding the staff reports that I don't address. So this project is a rezone of an ag parcel. It's a 30 acre parcel, it's zoned ag 10 acre minimum and he would like to rezone to SUD. Um, the reason for that, it will still have an ag function, but he would like to um, not almost fully vertically integrate several different cannabis activities. He would like to have a nursery in the future. If code changes, he would like to accommodate a larger cultivation site than what he currently has. He would like a distribution facility and manufacturing. And the main reason for the rezone is because he would like to do type 7 or volatile manufacturing. Um, on ag right now, yes, you can do non-volatile manufacturing, but he is proposing to do volatile manufacturing. And he's proposing to do that in a couple of steel buildings. Um, those are on the site map. Um, there was a, kind of a difficult to read project map, site map in the staff report, so I did print some more. Um, they're larger scale. If you'd like to look at those, they do show you a little more clearly where the floodplain is on the property. There's quite a bit of the property is in the floodplain. Um, the manufacturing that he's proposing is outside of the floodplain, uh, confirmed by an elevation certificate that he had done back in 2016. Um, an initial study of mitigated night deck were prepared for the project. Those can be found, that can be found um, online for anybody's reference. Um, we received one letter from Fish and Wildlife through the clearinghouse, and they had several comments. There were basically four different comments that they made that are addressed in the staff report. So if you have additional questions about those, please let us know. Um, the property has a pretty extensive history of permitted buildings, um, what you see on the site map, all the structures on the site maps, with the exception of one that's currently in process, have been permitted. Um, and I didn't count them up, but it looks like there's probably 15 building permits that are on the property. Um, access to the property is via Morgan Hill Road. Um, adjacent land uses to the north and to the south or ag, to the west, there is the old mill site, it is industrial. So his proposal to change to an SUV is, like I said, really geared at trying to accommodate um, a full cannabis facility with a number of different uses. <coughs> Do you have any questions? I would just like to mention the fact that I have visited the site actually twice. And uh, one thing that I think it would be important to note um, is that even though it appears that the entire, on some of the maps, that the entire site is on the floodplain, that the project area is, what is it, about almost 16 feet above the floodplain, 5 to 15 point something above the floodplain, and uh, so flooding would not be an issue, and, and I was able to to see that by visiting the site. Other thoughts 
extra questions for Sam. I have a question about the, you mentioned the accommodating additional activities if the code changes. So to tease out what is actually going to be done if the code doesn't change, or in other words, where we're starting, it's, um, there's a 10,000 square foot cultivation area today, okay? The um, conditional use permits are for uh, okay. manufacturing, distribution, and not the nursery or, or a nursery as well. Nursery. Does yes. the nursery fit within the total uh, canopy on the property along with current cultivation under current ordinance? Uh, well, they're separate. Um, currently, his 10,000 square feet of canopy for his normal cultivation will remain where it is, and then he's adding the nursery separate to that. Okay. And are those two different premises, or? Yes, they have to be. Okay. okay. And so all the discussion about the larger cultivation area and lots more greenhouses moving in inside, all that depends on code change. Those are future. Correct peek into the future plans. Correct. Okay. But since he was doing the evaluation and he knows he wants to do that, okay. he didn't want a future piecemealing situation, Very um, good. even though we can't do it now, okay. it was included in the evaluation. Great. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, <clears throat> all right. This is a public hearing then. Uh, at first, I'd like to hear from the, uh, I would like to offer the applicant uh, an opportunity to speak first if you'd like. And then We'll have open comment and after three minutes, uh, all seven times up. Okay. Uh, my name is Daniel Davudian. I'm the uh, principal manager at Value Plenty. Um, I'm here before you guys uh, to have this scope of work approved. Um, it's been a real interesting experience working with county staff from all the different departments, whether it's planning, building, environmental health. Um, code enforcement, the cannabis department, I mean, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure everybody's toe has been dipped uh, in the development of this project to date, and uh, it's, I just really appreciate the uh, patience that I've been shown by certain staff members in uh, county and, and the uh, guidance that I've been given by my consultant to be here before you guys tonight. Um, we're really looking forward to be able to have this opportunity to provide some gainful employment to community members and an opportunity for 200-something licensed uh, farmers in this county to have access to the greater market in California and services right now that they need to contract out to uh, businesses in Humboldt <coughs> and Sonoma County as those are the two closest uh, manufacturers as reflected in the draft EIR that was even uh, prepared by uh, Ascent, I think is, is the consultant's name that's preparing the county DIR. It would be nice to have a um, homegrown, excuse the pun, uh, manufacturer here in Trinity County. And uh, again, I just look forward to the opportunity and appreciate all of the, uh, everything today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone care to? Yes, sir, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Charlie Simpson. I'm the owner and principal of Base Camp Environmental uh, and located in Lodi, California. And we were retained by Mr. Davudian to assist with the CEQA process to, to prepare this formidable document and to work with Leslie and her staff to be sure that it got uh, proper review and circulation through the state clearinghouse. So um, I want to just take a minute to review with you what we found in that document. Since there's some uncertainty, you don't have it in front of you. Um, we have, and by the way, I've been doing this for something like 43 years, same thing. So, you know, maybe that's to my discredit, I'm not sure. But, these are not exciting documents. Um, but anyway, we run through a series of about 20 different analyses in an initial study and examine the project in light of each one to determine whether there's a significant environmental effect or not. If there is, we're obligated to identify mitigation measures that will reduce those effects to less than significant if they can 
And if they cannot, then it's time to do an environmental impact report. So in this case, the majority, uh, and the vast majority of the impact categories that we evaluated were found to be less than significant. And when you get your copy of the initial study, you can, if you like, confine yourselves to chapters one and two, where you'll find a summary of all the impacts and a detailed project description that really goes into quite an extensive discussion about what Mr. Pagudi is proposing out there. So starting from scratch and keeping it short, uh, there were no aesthetic impacts of the project. Uh, the site is well screened from the highway, from Highway 3 across the river. It's at quite a distance from the highway, and um, all the activities that are on the site will be screened from adjoining uses. There is no existing agricultural activity, although it's zoned for it. So the project wouldn't displace any agriculture uh, the project would have really minor air quality emissions uh, all below, well below the thresholds of the North Coast Air Quality Management District. And um, there is one potential issue related to odors, which is mitigated internally by uh, a piece of the project, which would be an odor mitigation system that would be installed on the uh, manufacturing <coughs> equipment and would be effective in reducing that potential effect to less than significant. So um, prior to our involvement in the project, there was a company called Natural Investigations hired to do biological and cultural resource studies of the site. They found no threatened or endangered species out there or any uh, wetlands, riparian areas, or anything else that would be impacted by the project. They also surveyed the area for archaeological resources and found nothing. So we do have mitigation in the initial study for what we call inadvertent discovery, because things can be buried and not be seen by a surface survey. And that would be one of the mitigations that would be applied to the project, as summarized in your staff report. So going on down the line, uh, we uh, these days we analyze potential effects on geology and soils, on greenhouse gas emissions, and on potential hazards. And other than the materials that Mr. Kavudian would be using in his process, which are all regulated and would have to be disclosed in his uh, hazardous materials business plan to your local agency, that there is no hazard related to the project and there is no existing contamination on the site. Um, the Hydrologic effects of the project are minor. Uh, there's no encroachment on any streams. The, pro the project will be served with a, an existing well that has been tested at something like 100 gallons per minute. Just want to be sure I got the units right. And um, we have also submitted a uh, technical report from a geohydrologist registered by the state who has examined the potential impacts of that well use at the rates, at the maximum rates that, that a project would consume. And their estimation is that the effects on surface flows in Hayfork Creek, if the two are connected, which cannot be determined, but they could be uh, connected, that would be much less than significant, very likely. So there are no major noise impacts. There are no population and housing effects. The project's been coordinated with the public service agencies and they're all happy with it. And the traffic generated by the project would be incidental and of no effect on the surrounding roads that serve the site. Um, and that really is the major points hit on in the initial study. And you know, if these documents are boring, they're probably even more boring to hear somebody talk about. So I'll just say, if you have any questions, I'd like to answer those. And if not, I'll sit down. But thank you for the opportunity. Hi, me. Please. The, the traffic <coughs> generated, um, that would be not people coming, not, very rarely would it be somebody coming into the facility. It would be employees of the company going in and out and not to the general public, is that correct? That's correct, and the majority of that traffic would be employee traffic. 
there would be trips in and out for distribution activities. Um, those would be on the order of a few trips per week rather than numerous trips per day. So you may have 20 some odd employees coming and going during peak seasons, but other than that, that's that's the traffic impact right there. So. Thank you. Okay. Can I answer any other questions for you? Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Daniel. I'm also a partner in the A4 project. I just wanted to touch base a little bit on what Daniel first talked about with the 200 other farming uh, licenses here in Trinity County. Without this kind of project, these farmers can't get their product to retail. There has to be a distribution. Unless they have a direct access to a store, they have to go through, through a distributor. They have to be a date in order for them to get there. So there's only about there's about 500 stores in California right now, but 1,500 coming out within the next year. So these farmers, in order for them to you know, pay taxes, it gets up to revenue, it gets up to market, they need a distribution hub in their local towns to help, get, help, help do that. So I kind of wanted to just kind of touch base on the and importance of having a project like this in Trinity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Michael Ruth. Um, I own 3060 Morgan Hill Road, which is a neighboring property to the proposed project. Um, I'm just here tonight to show support um, for the A4 manufacturing project. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gabe Cardillo, and I'm a farmer in Trinity County. I have a licensed facility in a Fork, and I'm here in support of Dan because we need a facility like that that he's designed, just like we were saying, to get our product to uh, market. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm Terry Mines, Junction City. I actually have serious concerns about this project. Um, right off the bat, as you can see in this letter, this gentleman couldn't handle a simple greenhouse. And we're going to put a Type 7 license in his hands. There's a huge forest behind his property right here. Type 7 kind of blows up people. I think that that's for all like on a mill site or on a commercial property. I don't think we need to change an agricultural property here today to make a bomb threat for Trinity County. I think that would be about the most irresponsible thing that you guys could ever do. I think that he's obviously in a floodplain. There's a lot of issues here. Just him having even a nursery, having even a garden he has. I just heard his consultant say there's no agricultural activities going on here, but he's got a garden there, so I don't know what his consultant is talking about unless growing cannabis isn't an agricultural activity. I think it is. So last time I checked, there's actually agricultural activity on that property. And I think that it's zoned agricultural. I have concerns about the distribution because of the traffic and the dirt and all that excess dirt that would be going into a flood zone, which we know that would be kind of an issue because of that kind of situation. He's planning on moving the dirt, obviously, <coughs> to the facilities and back into a flood zone there. 16 feet. Um, the last time I checked, when Junction City burned down, nobody could rebuild because the flood zone's different. They came back in. That flood zone's actually not the same. So I'd actually like to the Army Corps of Engineers to come in here and make sure that flood zone's the same because we actually just had this happen in our county two years ago that it wasn't. So I think there's some serious concerns here. Uh, I mean, I'd be very, very skeptical about ever issuing a Type 7 license that's not on the correctly zoned property in a situation where we're not going to burn down Trinity County. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> How are you doing today? I'm going to be doing the uh, extraction of this facility if we get it going. And, uh, I think there is, Colorado's have close to five years, maybe six years of running legal extraction with type seven. And under the right circumstances and built correctly, then under the right circumstances, there's never been an issue like this man was just talking about. 
Um, I've talked to a few, I've had a few interactions, done a few things in Las Vegas with a few legal labs. I've had a few conversations with uh, industrial commercial hygienists. He has told me specifically that this is a little less dangerous than even painting cars. We have our solvents, our stay in liquid, vaporize them inside of a closed system. They stay completely contained. We are in a booth that sucks out all air. Everything, everything is explosion proof. Everything is UL listed. Everything is completely built and designed for exactly what we're doing. The horror stories that are heard is a lot of the black market stuff that was done outside of those parameters and hasn't been done and built correctly like we can do now that we can go through the process and have it done correctly. Um, I think the danger, it's, it's not okay to say it's not, but we are obviously doing anything and everything we can to make sure that it is not a danger to anybody or the community and a benefit. Thank you guys. Thank you. Hello, Chris Dwyer. Um, Move my parents up here. I love this area. I own a bit of land in the same district. I've uh, heard and seen photos of the collapsed greenhouses. It was a failure to just maintain some simple temperature of the, of the greenhouse structure by this company, Corporation LLC. They can't even maintain a greenhouse over the winter. How are we going to hand them the keys to like, explosive material in the county? I think if that, if that were to, let's say, explode, create a fire or something, it could potentially make us look bad, the county look, maybe other licenses would get shut down, the simple engineering thing on the greenhouse. Um, a couple months ago, maybe three, we in here trying to shut down someone else's manufacturing distribution. I couldn't figure out why someone would be doing that since I know he's a farmer as well. And now he's here at High Mighty trying to save the community and bring in distribution manufacturing. Well, was he not back then just trying to eliminate competition? And now here he is, the sole savior, pretty, pretty sane here to save us all. No, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Commission. Justin Hawkins from A4. Um, this is a really interesting staff report and proposal for project because I don't think we've ever seen, for cannabis at least, an SUD rezone. And, uh, you know, I've looked up SUD rezones and it, it looks to me like there's two types. There's kind of the more residential, uh, maybe for, there's some for camps and stuff where they have a uh, a rezone for it's commercial but it's not industrially based. This to me seems like more of the industrially based rezone, kind of like what we have in Weaverville down below um, the Performing Arts Center, right, in that area, industrially zoned. And I think that was the spirit of why, the, you know, originally uh, well, in our ordinance we have Type 7 manufacturing allowed in those SUDs is for, for rezones that make sense for industrial purposes. This is located on Morgan Hill Road, which is across from the highway, down a dirt road. It's and paved. it's paved, but it's down a road that is, it's not a major highway. And it, to me, I looked at the rezone, you've got an unclassified on one side with a resource designation, so I would expect that to get an ag forest or an ag zone designate, uh, zoning if it was not unclassified. The other ones are ag around it as well. There is one, of, uh, I think it's the, uh, the heavy industrial, which is basically uh, heavy manufacturing, which is basically uh, industrial zone. It's the parcel to the west. They share the creek. I, I just, I don't see a clear reason why we need to have it rezoned to SUD, other than he wants to have all these license types. It seems unusual. I'm just a little surprised. Um, I hope it works. I hope you guys agree that it works, but to me it was a little surprising. But I would like to mention one thing on the map. It's on uh, page 26 of the document. 
property and premise diagram. I found an odd notice that on the top on the top right hand top left hand corner of that map, they show the pond. And it has the 100 foot setback around that pond, if you guys can see that kind of line. Um, I think that's a 100 foot setback from the pond that you're required to have for surface water. But in the new state water border, it's actually 150 feet from surface water, including ponds. Additionally, you're not allowed to have cultivation activities within those setbacks, whether it's 100 or 150 feet. You were allowed to have 100 feet back in the original water board order. But they've got a greenhouse within 100 feet. You've got cultivation activities, including processing within 100 feet of the pond. I'm not really sure how that's allowed under the water board orders. I might, if I'm looking at this right, that 100 foot line goes all the way around and includes all those cannabis activities. I, I just, I just, unless I'm misreading the map, that looks like he's got a bunch of activities within the set preparing set back. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good question. Blanco and Blanco. <laughs> Another PC, and yeah. let's see if I can talk quietly. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Um, I'm not familiar with this property, and I don't actually know a lot about it, so I don't have a lot of comment on the project. I am familiar, however, uh, as I think most of the commission, at least everyone who was here last time, for Nicholas Holiday's did. Um, who's going to come back again in July for a variance, and even though it was in the staff report that he needed it to complete his project, and he requested it in September, uh, had to get recontinued because it wasn't properly noticed. I don't see the word rezone anywhere on the agenda. So I don't know how, I, I think that's a significant part of this project, is the rezone. And, and you all know that as well. Um, so I don't know what we got to do to like get consistency, but uh, we do have to have um, just so that we don't have Nicholas, you know, feeling frustrated that he's got to come back and if something else doesn't get noticed, but we can go ahead and deal with it. So uh, otherwise, I trust your judgment to to figure out what to do with this. Um, and we did this all that way can be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Mike Carvillo. I work on a licensed farm in the Cape Port area. I'm here to voice my support for the Cape Port project. Um, there's a lot of people in our area that could really benefit from this. And I, I personally have been to the facility. I've seen it. I've seen been around the area. Um, it's nowhere near uh, the town. It's neighboring a mill side across the creek. I personally think that if there's, I can't think of a better location in the Hayport area than uh, the proposed location. Um, he's also one of the only people I'm aware of that had an environmental impact study done on his own property outside of the county doing it. So again, I uh, am in support of this project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Anybody else? I don't know if you have rules. No, we do. We have rules about speaking twice. Oh, yeah? Okay. And you're breaking it. <laughs> Again, Charlie Simpson basically a quick one message. minute because you're with the government. I've already used up all my time. So I just want to speak quickly to the SUV issue that one of the speakers brought up. And, and I particularly want to speak to that because. I analyzed that in detail before we suggested it to the planning department and to, um, to Mr. Dabudian, and it has been 
kind of been through the mill already. So my thoughts on that are that uh, the SUD zone, there's nothing in the ordinance that, that, that points to specific areas where that should or uh, where it should or shouldn't apply. It, it might be applied in an industrial area or a commercial area or an ag area. But what it does seem to be is something that's set up to allow this commission the flexibility to evaluate sensible projects that need something a little different than is required by the strict interpretation of the zoning ordinance. Um, and this is one of those things. Now the scale of what's being proposed, this is not an industrial scale project. There's one building, the majority of which would be for storage, and inside the building a container-sized structure that would be used for the manufacturing process. The rest of it is generally do I use up my minutes on it? Pretty much. Okay, one more quick point. So anyway, the SUD, I think, is, is oriented towards economic development in general and meant to be applied broadly. Thank you. Can I speak to one more point? Okay. So, um, again, this, ha this has to do with the SUD. Um, on the A10 zoning that my parcel is currently, um, the Type 6 manufacturing <coughs> is allowed. One of the solvents that is allowed under that Type 6 license is ethanol. Um, ethanol vapor is just as flammable, explosive, dangerous, you know, all, all of these, you know, fear factor words as butane or pentane or any of these other solvents, they all, they all carry the same risk. However, there are certain and very specific um, industrial process equipment that's involved in, in these uh, manufacturing processes which are required by the state to be employed in these facilities. There's, it's not like, you know, we're in the backyard with a bunch of cans of lighter fluid um, making the dope in a bathtub. Like, this is a, a serious um, industrial chemical process that is common amongst many other industries. It's not unique to cannabis in any way, shape, or form. Um, thank you very much. Good evening, Commissioners. <clears throat> One thing that I found interesting in the staff report is um, here on page 11, um, discussing comment 1D, which was from Fish and Wildlife regarding biological resources. And the comment was that the, let's see, policy, cannabis policy requires that prior to commencing any cannabis land development or site expansion activities, cultivators shall have a qualified biologist identify sensitive plants, wildlife species, or communities at the proposed development site. CEQA requires that information developed in negative declarations be incorporated in the database, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, accordingly, please report any special status species or natural communities detected during project surveys to the California Natural Diversity Database. Um, and then the response is that the applicant's consultant did not find the presence of any special status species and natural communities during any surveys conducted on the site. Therefore, no reporting was required. We don't see a copy of the biological assessment uh, in the staff report. I don't know if one was... It's 200 page copy right there. Well, Okay, that's just an important point. Thank you. Uh, and so, uh, if there were any detected <coughs> or any mitigating measures, part of actual it would be nice if they made it into the condition. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Join once. I will close public comment. Mr. did you have a comment? Okay. If we'd only seen the initial study. Okay, understood. Um, all right, commissioners, your thoughts on this item? Well, I'm wondering 
if we are going to be continuing it because we have not seen the initial study, do we want to go on with our comments or do we want to, I mean, what, I'm, it seems to me that we're at a decision point right now if we're going to continue it or not. And I don't know that I want to make comments based, if we're going to be continuing it, I would rather wait to make comments. Okay. Um, I don't hope we continue. But uh, what's the pleasure of the commission? Do you want to try and move to a motion on this, or would you like to continue it and do the homework? Uh, before we go even that far, I'd like to ask uh, council to answer Mr. Blanco's statement about the zoning notice. The rezone's not agendized, the CUPs, and then they get neg down or agendized. So we wouldn't be rezoning to SUD? That's correct, not tonight. So we would have to continue with any yeah. case. Any other of which we can't issue yes. one of those CUPs. But any other, right? The type 7 would require the rezone. So we can't issue that CUP. So it looks like we should continue this item. We will be back anyway. I will make a motion that we continue this item to the next available meeting um, so it can be properly agendized and we can see the environmental document. And noticed. And noticed. I'll second. Motion to continue and second. Any discussion, commissioners? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, since you have to re-notice anyway, there's not, it's not necessary to set the date right now. That would avoid re-noticing, but you have to re-notice. Okay. And that brings us on to agenda item number five. This is a proposed amendment to zoning ordinance number 315, also known as Title 17, for a moratorium on news grading in Trinity County, location is county wide, and as we can in this case is Trinity County Plan. Uh, I do want to point out one quick correction right off the bat, unfortunately, that it is not a moratorium. Uh, that word was scrapped. It is a restriction on mass grading, the ordinance number 1347. So, of course, you have seen this item before. Uh, it's gone to the board. It was approved on April 2nd. On its second reading, Sounded just like venting. All right, thank you. Continue, Dave. Sorry, sir. No, it's a good question. Absolutely. Thank you for noticing. Keep your keep your eye on the door. Um, uh, it went to the board, had its second reading, and became effective on May 17th. But conditional on your approval was that I bring this item back to the planning commission for four specific changes. So the ordinance was approved, but they requested a recommendation from the Planning Commission on what you see in background, A, uh, agricultural grading exemption, we want a clarification on that language. Uh, they wanted a modification of the timeline for response by the county after receipt of an application. Uh, they wanted removal of some specific language in Section 5, uh, and to clarify emergency work section. Staff has also included uh, some other changes that uh, we felt were necessary. And I think I have to point out at this point, any spelling mistake in the staff report is definitely my fault. So keep that in mind, please. Um, so at your pleasure, I'd be happy to talk about each of those items that the board requested to be changed, or 
piecemeal, which, whichever you would like to do. Um, this is a preference I suggest you just go through. Absolutely. So, the first item on Section 1.4, Agricultural Grading, a particular commissioner asked that that be clarified. Uh, there was some discussion about... A particular board member? Yes, correct. Uh, some clarification about the idea if you're, if you're say, disking a hay field over time, that can actually change the topography of the ground, uh, where the condition here was that you should not be grading more or less than two feet uh, deeper or above the natural contour of the ground. So, and the different types of equipment, <clears throat> excuse me, that could be used during a typical agricultural activity, grading, disking, uh, mold board plows. Uh, I added some language here just to describe what I meant by grading on agricultural land. Uh, so you can see the section here, the, the changes are underlined in, in italics. Any uh, redactions or any, any, anything I was taking out is uh, struck through. So my intent, again, is to satisfy that board member's concern about the specific restrictions on agricultural land and what is and is not exempt. So everything you're reading there would be considered exempt. Um, that is on page two. Yeah, I think the original language was one, four, the following carry in a grading project is exempt from its grading ordinance. Agricultural grading. That does, I see that does not create one of two feet or that, you know, that, that, the end of A and start of B is in that, that. Thank you. That would be my last. Substantially change the natural contour that is the same thing with the next one. It includes the same thing. At least I'm consistent. Any thoughts on this item? Uh, I guess you're going to staff report. The small audience, maybe we just will interact with you as we go. I'm, I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? Um, any thoughts on clarifying that exemption? It made sense to me when I read yeah, it. I agree. Okay, I get you. Yeah. Okay. So the second item, uh, halfway down page two, time limits on the ordinance, that is related to another specific request by a board member. Uh, I tried to add some reason for and against in those two paragraphs at the top of that section, and then following that is the actual uh, language modification. So going through, simply put, 30 days was the original language that you saw, that if the county were to receive an application that we would respond within 30 days of either approval or denial of the application. If we did not, then the application would be deemed complete and a permit would be issued. Uh, again, that's meant to keep things moving, of course. Uh, the request was to change that to 21 days, specifically because of the nature of contractor work, uh, needing to generate income, generate projects, uh, almost on the fly is one way to put it, during the summer months, during the construction season. Uh, you need to mobilize and demobilize in a fairly complicated logistical dance, oftentimes, and so the request was to make sure that the county permit processing that uh, pro the process would not slow them down. They didn't want equipment to be hanging out in the field waiting for the county to provide it. I very much understand that. I've worked with a number of contractors and been in that situation where uh, timelines are very tight and uh, logistics are very difficult. On the other side, for the county though, uh, the intent is that 30 days is, sufficient, is a sufficient amount of time for us to be able to get to a permit for approval. Our workloads don't require that, but it definitely would make things easier for us in terms of processing. And part of the intent of the original uh, uh, drafting of this ordinance was that the director's use permit was requesting the same information that a contractor or a owner would need anyway to apply for other permits, such as Fish and Wildlife, the Water Board, Army Corps, any of those types of details in terms of project description, and maps, and material volumes, all of that. So the idea was this was a similar process. They should already have those materials. They should have already planned ahead. They should maybe plan in the winter months and then have things ready to go for the summer months, regardless of their specific schedule of implementation. Uh, that was the intent, but there can be a good arguments on both sides. For the 21 day project. <coughs> so on page three, that is where you'll see those changes. 
So this reduces from 30 days to 21 days the time within which the county responds to the update. Correct. And, county, and, and you're proposing the county's okay with this? Uh, this was a condition of approval by the board. So I, I, they wanted a recommendation from the county commissioners. So Does the county have a recommendation? Does the staff have a recommendation? Um, staff would like it to remain 30. <laughs> I would like it to remain 30. Uh, I'm not sure if you would like to speak to it, but I believe the intent of putting together your permits before you do the work is valid, and understanding that changes the shift of the flow of work for any particular contractor to change that mode of work that has been existing in this county for a long time, that work is done on the fly, or there isn't sufficient planning or documentation uh, to show what is being done, which is the intent of this ordinance, uh, I would recommend 30 day, but I do not want to contradict a, a board member. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Zee, we'll be important to any fund. This is uh, calendar days, correct? Correct. Working days. Calendar days. I personally think 30 days is, is, is reasonable. Um, I suppose we could say 21 working days, <laughs> that would be a little more time. But, but I think just because the county traditionally has not done a lot of pre-planning and getting things organized ahead of time doesn't mean that they shouldn't start doing it. Big change, yeah. yeah. To change the culture of equipment operators, <coughs> yeah. it's not a trivial thing. I and I recognize that. I'm just you know, stating my thoughts. And I understand that that they want to get jobs done so they can move on to their next job, but. Well, you have to remember, we haven't had a grading ordinance, so exactly. very few plans have been drawn. Exactly. And or that's... engineered, or any of that stuff, or yeah. any road, no, ex or exactly. building pad, or whatever. And so this is this is a large change. Yeah, no, I, I recognize that. But, but if we're going, if it's going to end up that they're going, that the planning department is going to need 30 days, we should do that at the beginning and not have not have delays based on the fact that they can't get the approvals out. I mean, the key here is whether or not they get a complete package yeah. application with sufficient information at the beginning. It's relatively easy to review an application and say, there's not enough information here. Yeah. And to basically say, provide this, this, and this, and this. So that, that would be relatively easy to do with them. Get out to the site and familiarize yourself enough with it. Review the plans when you got, I don't know, dozens of these maybe? I mean, what, what kind of workload do you anticipate? I'm happy to give an overview of what I've seen so far. Like, oh, it could have been a place to start. Um, we've, been, we've been in operation here for uh, two weeks, a uh, month, okay, since May, May 17th. Uh -huh. So, uh, the day after the ordinance came into effect, we sent out four notice letters um, uh, requesting right of entry in order to look at grading operations that appeared to be over the threshold. At that point, we talked to all of those individuals and were satisfied that they were putting erosion controls in place. Our interpretation of the ordinance, uh, when it was going to start, the, the time of enactment was that even if heavy equipment was off-site, but that there were no obvious soil erosion, controls in place, that project was still considered to be active. And so those were the letters that we sent out. Um, I've had conversations with two engineers that are called with some detailed questions about how the grading ordinance would come into effect for any particular project that they had going at that point. Uh, I talked to several cannabis consultants who had similar questions about when it would apply and when it would not, simply conversations about clarification. An operator who called with the same intent. Um, 
I've been receiving complaints. Um, so four, uh, four total additional complaints that have not yet been investigated. So complaints about grading. Complaints about grading and done without proper. Would require following the procedure here, requesting right of entry to determine whether the thresholds have been reached or not. And again, that would apply whether even the heavy equipment was off-site if there were no obvious sediment control erosion BMPs in place. Uh, one of those complaints was through the online system. Uh, four additional complaints have come through staff, or not complaints, but um, sites have come to our attention from staff or agency individuals. Uh, I've done one plan check for whether or not it would uh, apply, the uh, ordinance would apply, and I believe that's described at the end of the staff report, and then one conversation over the counter. So if we're talking 12, 15 interactions. Related not to not a single application. Not a single application. So it's early in the process. It's um, we're rolling it out to speak to those four notice uh, notice letters. You know, I I was not intending to issue violations off of that. I was looking for corroboration that they were going to put sediment controls in place and receive photographic evidence that that was true. So that's a small bit of background. To your question about what we expect, uh, I expect that over the next several months it will continue along this vein of uh, looking at potential violations and essentially getting the word out to the individual contractors, the equipment operators, individuals, and landowners that the ordinance is in fact and needs to be provided. You would expect there's grading going on in the county? Yes. In the, yes. Towards the end of June, in the short season. <laughs> Understand that this is a complaint driven ordinance. Basically. So, <clears throat> pleasure or recommendation. I'd like to see a shorter time frame, just in, just in general. So we just try to be as responsive as we can. But um, you know, if we learn that okay. the okay. workload is such that it oh, yeah. can't be done. Yeah, no, no. I, think we, have to change that. I think we've gone beyond just interacting with staff because we're going to have to have all the time on that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 my mistake. All right, so I think we understand the issue. Let's go on to emergency work. Uh, sure I am going to gonna point to the top of page three. That struck through paragraph there was also requested to the board, uh, suggesting that, yes, there are no further intentions at this time to develop a, a grading program, another grading ordinance. Emergency work, uh, they requested some clarification. Uh, it, it was kind of twofold. One supervisor suggested that the, the language was too lenient toward a landowner who could do excessive grading during an emergency, and others may suggest that it needed to be more specific. Uh, it was stemming from a conversation that we uh, raised by the commissioners here that uh, individuals with heavy equipment are often called out on to emergencies, and they were just requesting some clarification. I'm hopeful that that language those additions are sufficient to satisfy the supervisors, but again, it's the commissioner's recommendation. Okay. Okay. So then, staff language clarification includes the bottom of page three exemptions. Those first three uh, were simplified into just one single bullet point, which is the basis of the, uh, the ordinance itself. Is if you have a conditional use permit or a director's use permit, you are exempt from restriction on mass grading. You are allowed to, to conduct mass grading with those permits in hand. Uh, additional discussion topics. Um, I had discussions with CAL FIRE about two acre or less conversions. I received some calls from CAL FIRE, or sorry, uh, Fish and Wildlife to clarify comments made to the supervisors in one of those meetings, I believe the first one, that you are not exempt from this if you have a three acre or less conversion. In other words, if you are approved by CAL FIRE to convert your land, you still need to apply by the grading ordinance if you are conducting grading beyond what is allowable under the, that conversion uh, exemption. They have very specific things that they will allow that are under the, the uh, California Forest Practice Rules. Uh, including uh, landing of a certain size or cutting roads for a certain purpose that are not intended to be permitted or uh, will be decommissioned in some fashion or another, the application of road control plans. Very similar 
idea as to what we're doing, but they, they will allow some cross slope road development and again landings for the purpose of removing the merchantable timber. However, if those stumps are being pulled out with a heavy piece of heavy equipment or roads are being graded more excessively than just the removal of those trees, that is not an allowable practice, and the grading ordinance would typically, I would assume, it would apply. So I just wanted to clarify that to the commissioners. Um, also, with one particular plan that was brought to us that was a, a remediation, um, it was a, a plan to fix a few creeks that had been cited had, for violations by state agencies. Uh, I allowed that to go through without applying the grading ordinance because of specific exemptions that, one, it's an existing road, and the details of the plan don't matter, it's an existing road, but also that because they were going through a state agency, they were uh, applying CEQA. They were uh, adopting the let letters have changed now, but uh, exemption F. They were being covered under CEQA by a state agency for that project. And we're considering, I think, whether that is appropriate, that we would allow pro uh, projects to go forward if another state agency is taking the lead on it. That may or may not be the original idea of this, but uh, it, it seemed appropriate at the time. Feel free to comment on that. And lastly, culvert replacement. This typically, this wasn't intended to cover culvert replacements. Uh, that again would be covered by other agencies, a number of other agencies that uh, would be applying conditions to those projects that I don't foresee that we would, we would be putting the grading restrictions on that type of activity. Uh, I do have other things to talk about, but I won't I talk too much. So. Any questions of staff before we open it up? <clears throat> All right, I'd like to open this one to uh, any public comment. Hello, Commissioners. Once again, John Bauer from Jefferson City. And uh, I think one of the reasons that the room is so empty tonight is because all of the dirt work professionals are out working on dirt right now, getting bit by mosquitoes because it's the dirt work season and they have to. It's a matter of survival. They have a very limited season here. And <clears throat> so the, the time frame for the county to approve a, or deny a permit or it be automatically uh, granted is really important here. The 30 days, 30 working days is far, far too long on a, what is realistically about a six, seven month work season. Um, the dirt work professionals that I'm familiar with all feel like um, two weeks, two weeks, 14 days is a more appropriate uh, time frame to get these approved or denied. And uh, you know, the, next to our commercial cannabis industry, I think our local contractors and dirt workers are definitely the uh, largest employers in the county. And support the most households. So I encourage a 14 day, not working day, 14 calendar day approval or denial period. Um, it will encourage staff to prioritize um, these uh, processing of these permits and hopefully keep our uh, professionals in business. Um, these folks invest a lot of money in their equipment, their training. Um, most of them are familiar with best management practices. Uh, and, um, you know, in light of the lack of applications, um, I think it's appropriate to move this thing a little closer to the industry and try to encourage some participation. That's what we really want to see here is people actually apply for these permits and jump through these hoops and uh, hopefully do more thoughtful dirt work. So, um, you know, in keeping with that, I think a 14-day uh, limitation is appropriate. And uh, the uh, additional exemptions and, and clarifications for, for ag work are uh, appropriate also. Um, I encourage uh, approval of this as written, except for the, the bumping down of the 30-day approval period to, to 21. <clears throat> I would like to see that 14 days. 
14, working, 14 calendar days. Um, we really want to see participation. I think it's, uh, that's the priority here. Thank you. That's all for now. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Commission Justin Hawkins from A4. You know, um, initially I was kind of worried about what this rating ordinance would look like, but I gotta say it's actually probably a pretty good effort for Trinity County, and um, I think it does address kind of the cultural change that we need to occur in this county. Um, so I think that that's good because um, it's not overly burdensome, but it begins to capture a lot of the most problematic impacts from grading in this county. Um, I've seen grading go on all spring, honestly. So I know there's grading going on that would qualify for this. So there is probably a messaging problem because I talk to people all the time and they're like, what? No, Trinity doesn't have a grading ordinance. I, I you know, I'm just making it up, I think. So, I think that it needs to go out in a better message, probably. And um, overall, I think it's good. I do think a reduced time frame for return of the application is important. And this has nothing to do with staff. I think that they are overwhelmed. I don't think anybody can deny the planning department is completely overwhelmed. We have to have something like this, I think, to be environmentally sensitive in this community. I think we all agree we need a grading ordinance, but the fact is, is that the, the planning staff is, is bare bones, and um, so I'm, 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 uh, it's a complex emotion because I think that they have not enough time, but we need to give them time to get it through. My problem comes with a lot of the CUPs and stuff is that the go-between, they'll wait 29 days and then tell you, hey, we need this extra information. You get it to them. Clock rolls on, another 30 days. You know what, we are, we need this also. I mean, this goes on with the CUPs. I mean, I don't know how CUPs take over a year to process through an outside firm. There's a lack of communication and a lack of just efficiency within the system. And I don't think this is gonna solve it. I don't have the answer, honestly, other than more staff, um, perhaps more money, a better pay rate for the staff. I, I just don't know, but we need to have it be simple and, and easily pushed along so that we can get these projects through. But giving them 30 days and then letting them take another 30 days and another 30 days for small changes, which what's going on in the CUP process is my understanding, it's gonna be tough. And we've got all these, the requirements of the IR coming down on cannabis. I just don't know how we make all this work very well. But we need to make sure that things move through fast. And I appreciate your time and it looks like a, um, your wisdom in this matter, I appreciate it also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, Veronica Kelly Alves, uh, Douglas City. As someone who had a particularly unprepared board meeting tonight because of her own inability to get a lot of things done at the same time, I would like to say that I know that the planning staff is has a lot going on. Overwhelmed, as he said, I kind of want to jump on those coattails for a moment. So I think it is appropriate to talk to your staff to see what time they can efficiently and hopefully within that time frame get it done. It sounds like it's something that, since it, the, the um, history has been, there hasn't been one. So getting people to change over is going to be tough. And to be able to get projects done quickly you can do a shorter time, but you want to make sure your, your department has enough time to give you guys the information to make informed decisions. And so I think maybe turning to your staff and saying, you know, I think they've given the recommendations of 30 days. I, the worst thing I think is to give a, a, a shorter time period. They can't meet it. That creates additional boiling of the pot, as they say. Um, and I would love to see them be able to have more staff and be able to get a lot of things done, because I have seen how hard they work. I'm someone who complains when I don't get what I want, so I can stand up here and say that. Um, but I do know that they are trying as hard as they can. Um, but make sure that they're given the, the tools that they need and the time they need to give you guys informed informa or information so you can make informed decisions. Just a thought. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Tom Belanco, Douglas City. Um, 
I generally like the uh, the grading ordinance. I think staff's done a good job of this. Third time we're looking at it. I think the timing with which it goes back to get revised is, is pretty uh, impressive considering everything else going on. I think it's been uh, fairly responsive to both the commission and the board when things have needed to be changed. Um, in terms of the, the exemption for projects that might be covered by other agencies, I would suggest maybe limiting that to those agencies to Cal Fire and Fish and Wildlife. Because uh, if either of those two are the lead agency on a project, like a three acre conversion or an LSA, you can get somebody in the badge, we'll come out, stand there and look at it, and then we'll look at it again when you're done. Um, a SWIP doesn't necessarily guarantee you're going to get a visit from somebody from the water board. Um, there are sanctions to go along with it and everything, I understand that, but I think, you know, most of our grading is going to have either Cal Fire or Fish and Wildlife involved anyway. Um, so I think those two agencies have, have demonstrated pretty good responsible uh, uh, responsibility out here. Uh, so if, if we are going to say, hey, if, if you're covered by another agency, I, I would not just say any agency, but I, I would leave it really to those two. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, I, I do think a, a, a reasonable time frame is appropriate because we do have such a short season and everybody knows that you know, it's a lot of stuff you got to bring to bear, people, fuel, equipment, uh, when you're doing some grading like this, so, uh, and, and they're being pulled in every direction, so uh, just for planning with a small P uh, out there amongst the people, um, having some kind of time frame I think is important. Uh, but otherwise, I, I think it's a good job. I think staff's done a good job with it, and uh, I, I would go ahead and sign board. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Daryl, unless you want to talk, that's everybody in the room. Try <laughs> <laughs> not to, but <laughs> all right. Sweet. Yeah. Yes. Now we can come talk. Daryl Ford, Waverville. The only comment I have is that I spend quite a bit of time with the planning department and, and everybody agrees they're overworked and all that sort of thing. But I think there's several other functions out there that have time limits on them as well. And so maybe they all ought to match up so that somebody doesn't have to worry about this ordinance is 30 days and this one's 21 and this one over here is 14 and that kind of thing. So maybe it would be a good idea for those to be aligned somehow. And I don't know what that means because I don't know all of them. I know that some of the ones I deal with, with certificate of compliance, mergers, lot lines, and that sort of thing have some of those kinds of requirements in them. Um, but, I, but I think probably from the standpoint of staff trying to figure out what they're going to do on a particular project, it would be good if they know typically we have 21 days or typically we have 30 days or whatever it is. So they have to worry about looking up each individual one to find out if they're past their timeline. So. Okay, thank you. I guess we'll close public comment. <laughs> okay. We'll walk back through them again. Did anybody uh, have any more thoughts on the agricultural grading exemption language on page two, section 1.4, paragraph M? Anything come to mind after that commentary? Makes sense. Um, about the time limits, that's the topic of the day. Well, first of all, how about striking that struck par uh, paragraph? Any thoughts on that one? It's pretty simple. The board doesn't want it in here because then I'm sure there'll be another arc ordinance. And that was part of the justification for the moratorium originally. I and mean, we have Director Tippett tell us that it was going to be such a complicated process to develop a grading ordinance that it was going to take a long time, but we need to do this now. I'm, I'm a little bit um, confused, I guess, about what the ultimate direction is. But That's right, he did. I remember that. Yeah, he made a big, yeah. big point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, that we, that we need to get this done, and then there would be a further, more detailed ordinance but later. But it's going to take a long time. Yeah. 
but short of a urgency ordinance where the statutes cover the time limits running on it, this doesn't really commit anything, and I think they just don't want to superfluous language. That would be my understanding. How about the 21 versus 30 versus some other number? Um, I, I, I'm kind of, if I may, Mr. Chairman, Please. I'm, I'm kind of confused on the conditional permit and director's permit. Like, is, is this something, any of this going to come before the commission as, as a conditional use permit? I mean, in, is there a need for that? I mean, I, I'm just, uh, and, and then if there is a need, what is the threshold that specifies what is a director's use permit and what would come before the commission? And then furthermore, if it's a conditional for 21, 30 days, I mean, that's, that's not going to cut it. And I think the conditional use permit and the director's use permit are for other. Like if you already, if you're getting a conditional use permit, say for your your cultivation site, then the grading part would be already have been looked at by staff. So then you wouldn't need to get a grading permit. You would just. Permit or use permit. Is that basically yeah. the way? That's a fine point. It'd be a pretty unusual situation, I think, where a conditional use permit would be required specifically for a grading. It would be typical that another exemption would would apply. Uh, some other agency, utility work, um, I, I, would, I would have to think of how hard how that would uh, come into play. But the idea of a director's use permit, we, we built in the conditional and director's use because of the scale of a potential project. <coughs> if it's particularly large, then it's likely going to have more Significant environmental impacts for a conditional use permit would be would make sense. Uh, so we, we did want to include that. So I would think more closely director's use permits would apply. It's pretty hard to meet the timeline, though. I mean, the director can always kick this director's use permit to the commission because he doesn't want to make that particular decision. So that can happen. If that turns it into a conditional use permit, that's great. But that's not going to happen in 21 days. You're not going to get it noticed and on our agenda and all that 21 days. So I don't see if it is a CUP, how we can meet the ordinance time. A, a 20 day period. I don't even know if you can make a 30 day period. It's um, a fine question. Yes. Uh, again, I would think generally if you're getting a conditional use permit, you're going through another process and you would not be applying for it. If, however, you did, then you could apply for it. Uh, later on. So you're going through the condition use permit and then you would deal with any particular grading issue down the line that's closer to that application deadline. I'm not sure exactly how to deal with that. Uh, I, I'm I, not sure how that would work. I don't, I'm trying, I can't even envision a situation where it would come up, but I, I, I'm not sure it hurts to have it in there except that it ties our hands. We'll never make the 21 day and that would be an automatic approval. It's not over conditional use permit. Or a grading, uh, grading but the grading, no. Yeah. I, so I think you see a grading DUP or CUP permit application. What is a grading CUP permit application? I, I would say that most, the, the easiest way to clean that up would be to get rid of the CUP and DUP and just be a grading permit application exactly. because a CUP is, you're not going to need a grading permit if you're getting a CUP. Uh, I have a point of condition. Point of condition. Right. Okay. Well, be a condition of the CUP? That you get but, 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 but you can do the grading. Or grading is addressed on the CUP. Yeah. Grading would be addressed in any CUP because they're. Because they're doing they're, something else. They're, yeah, and we already address grading in our CUPs without the grading ordinance of any kind. Um, there's erosion control measures and all that and all your CUP. So I'm well, I think that's the exemption at the bottom of page three. A project that creates a volume over the thresholds that obtains a CUP or DUP is an exempt yeah. project because that permit process will cover the rate. So the which brings me back to the time in. Does this if we delete the reference to DUPs and CUPs and just reference grading permits, does that can consistent with the way the process does flow. We wanted to house it in an existing permit process, and so we chose a director's use permit.
permit process. Right, but That's can fine. we just eliminate CUP because you don't want to have CUP here because there's no way you can get the CUP done within the within 21 Chair, can you please open up public comment again? I have something to add. Just add. Uh, so the supervisor, both your cells and the supervisors, never granted authority for director's use or conditional use permits regarding this. This is a ministerial permit. So I think we're talking about a ministerial permit and some confusion about if a grading permit through ministerial means gets a, a, a okay. can have an exemption got it, got it. if it's part of a director's use or a conditional use permit project. Okay, that makes but me this is a ministerial permit as currently approved. That makes me want to just delete DUP or CUP references in there because you've already said if you go for DUP or CUP, you're exempt because those processes will cover the grading requirements. And this would be if it's a ministerial or any other kind of action, you have to get grading permit and then the timing applies. So how I'm sorry, how would how would exemption A be then if you're gonna say conditional use for no, no exemption A would stay the same. same. It's the reference to twenty one days would drop the reference to D U P or I see, okay, good. That, that's Section one dot four is where we one dot five is where we drop that and we leave the exemption alone. And then after all that, we still haven't come up with a number of days that we want to. We still haven't decided number of days, but there are days we get. I mean, the CUP was jumping out as if that's impossible for us. Then that would make some question. Of it. It's relevant to the so we, maybe you could. David, maybe you could expand a little bit. When you said that you wanted to do it within the framework of the existing permit process, that's why you chose that CUP and the CUP. But so the planning department has, okay, the intent of the process is that an applicant would drop off a standard DUP application at the planning department that would include project description, location, map, neighbors, all that stuff, which is a, a standard project a, a permit with a, a standard fee schedule. So we wanted to fold it into that because it's an established process. At that point, that application would be delivered to the bargaining transportation for review because that's principally where the engineers are housed in the operations division. And approval for recommend, or a, a recommendation for approval of the permit would happen in that house and then go back to the planning department. So there's meant to be some give and take, but it was through a, a standard route that follows uh, subdivision map revisions or lot line adjustments or other other types of permits that require uh, uh, routing through other departments. That was our intent. So rather than creating a new ministerial permit process, we wish to use the director's use permit process. So where did the CUP come in to that? That was, that just, was, was there a threshold that you? That was part of a discretionary threshold where the director would apply a requirement for a CUP if a project was large enough and potential environmental impacts were large enough that it was warranted. In some sense, though, it's not a use permit, as as contemplated by the zoning ordinance. Right? It's not a it's not a use of the property in, in, this, in that sense, subject to zoning. So you know. It's a grading ordinance. And it's like a building permit, more like a building permit, which has a ministerial process, right? Gets routed. So I don't think we should tie it here to a DUP permit. I think it is a grading permit, and you figure out what that is. And if, and if, you, if you really need the ordinance to say it's a ministerial or it's something else, then they can fix that at the board when they when the council looks at this and says we would like the board to say it's that kind of permit. But if it's because a zoning use permit doesn't seem to be what it is. It's not a director's use permit in that sense. All the other ones that we've seen that come by or where director's use permits being issued is what you can do in a, you know the use of the property, not not the alteration like a building permit. That's how I think of it at this moment. 
Does that make sense to you? Yes. I don't want to force something that you said you, you think is just wrong. I can review the video too if I, I get confused. Yeah. Well, Please don't. The, the <laughs> other way you could fix it besides removing DUP or CUP would be simply to to add a phrase after request for remove the or and put request more information or refer to the planning commission. Which still then you're not gonna fall inside twenty one days. Yeah. No, I know. But but, but but they will have they will have they will have taken an action within twenty one days. Okay. And and that's all that they're required to do is take an action. I really don't think that um, reviewing grading is falls under the purview of the no, planning that, commission. That I, I'm not. I, I, I don't think I'm qualified. Sorry. Unless it triggers a sequence, unless it's a really big deal. Yeah, exactly. Then you, then you are into a bigger permit land. But if this is like you're cutting a roadway and you need a director to sign off on it because it got routed and you proved it. But, but it's they not just, a permit. No. They just got done saying that it would be the only ones that would be referred to the planning commission would be those that went over what they felt the, the reasonable threshold was for sequel. And if they, if, if they need to have that ability to move it up a step, then they should have it. Well, I think the point is that there's, there just aren't going to be any projects that are just grading projects. No, and, and I They're always going to have some other development or some other use. Yeah, or that's probably else. true. I mean, the grading is just a means to an end, right? structure for handling it right from the beginning, then it's very difficult to deal with that process once it's in motion and change the process. So the director's use permit, we have a routing process already in place for that. We have a fee structure for it. It seemed like we were anticipating that grading permits would be similar, would require a similar, similar level of effort for us to evaluate as a director's use permit. With the exception of county engineer, or other engineering staff down at DOT reviewing them uh, with a little more uh, a little more effort than your standard director's use permit. You know, your standard director's use permit is like an RV parked on a site for a year while somebody's building that home. But the, the thing is, the director's use permit is the discretionary decision, mm -hmm. right? A grading permit is if I meet the requirements, I get to grade. Yes. Right? That's a ministerial. Right. That is a ministerial. So I understand your point earlier. I'm just letting you know why we chose that structure. But I think you can. It seems to me you could follow the director's use permit yeah. process, but it's not a discretionary thing. It just gets the routing done. Right. And the end of the day, a director signs it and says, "Yeah, the work is properly done," or if, okay. he, if he needs to. But that, unless you just think that's plain wrong, that's not the way. No, I understand your point, and I think it's something that should go to the board, and they should make a decision then if it's a new permit type, decide on the fee. The appropriate fee as well. That's definitely something they should do. <laughs> <laughs> and that so, was another thing. So you know, to something that was already built. Do neighbors get noticed? Yes. Under the where does the uh, process Director's use permit, they do. Yes. Um, and but they don't on a building permit. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now. So let's back up. The intent of this ordinance is to capture the environmental problems and head them off. Okay, they're um, In that sense, it's a building permit. You got to build to code. Your plans have to be plan checked, and you have to build to code. That you have to grade to code. You have to meet all the requirements of it. But it almost isn't a neighbor thing. This isn't a discretionary thing where if it doesn't fit in the neighborhood, we should do it. It's like it can't pollute the stream. It can't meet, move so much. To, you know. Um, that's why if you put the DUP term in there, it makes it sound like it's a discretion and, you know, neighbor input will be factored in and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. 
But that if, if they, so does a big building. But yeah, that yeah mean, but, but if they take off the top of a of the hill that you're it's looking at, it, 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 it's still. If, if you want to not do that, buy the hill. <laughs> <laughs> that one was made very clear to me in a past life. So, um, uh, and it affects your neighbors. Of course, it affects. That's not the point. The point is, is a discretionary thing like that, and I'm not against noticing neighbors. I'm saying that it, it, it affects the way we think about how these permits are issued. That's the news. The nuance. And we're beating this to death. Well, no, but that's one of the things that takes time. Is if you're going to get feedback yeah. from your neighbors exactly. and you have to mail out notices, you, you can't possibly do it in 14 days. You yeah. probably can't even do it in 21. I'm sure you can't. So. I mean, at least if it, you expect them to get any notice and have more than a day to get back to you or something like that. So. I think if we start requiring neighbor feedback for every grading project in Trinity County, we will never move there again. Not legally. You just won't have any participation. Because it, um, it, it is the same thing. Like it, It's like a building permit. Um, there has to be guidelines and they have to be followed. You can't have everybody have their say and then decide differently on every project, um, it, will, it would never work. I don't like the color paint my neighbor painted. <laughs> exactly. So we definitely need to remove anything with the use permit. Yes, that's where I'm glad to get to. And then we have to get back to the number of days. Right, so if it's a ministerial permit, right, what, what would be the normal routing process and time frame on a building permit? that would have to go to more than one county department. Any different? Uh, well, a building permit depends on the complexity of the project, for one thing. Uh, you know, generally speaking, the permit goes in, uh, gets routed to all other departments. I mean, I've submitted building permits and I've got a call that they were it was ready within five days. Right. Wow. And again, it depends on the, the quality of the material that comes in. Look, <laughs> you I'm sorry. <laughs> it depends on the quality of the material that comes in. Uh, they can route it to other departments, and there is going to be one plan check day that uh, is dedicated, and the building official pretty much dedicates one day for a week to just do plan checks. Um, how this process works with NDOT, uh, we're going to have to see, you know, we're anticipating that their workload can handle it, but turnaround time, I would think. <laughs> From all departments. Go for 14, then. Yeah. Way too fast. In Porce County, the state, we need to encourage economic development. Right. I would. Yeah. It makes 21 sound. It's a little important. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. 21 should be fine. I tried. <laughs> it's compromised. Uh, do we have consensus on 21 days and striking DUP and CUP references in that paragraph? Now, is this 21 calendar? Calendar days. And we can add that word, yes. Calendar days. And striking DUP and CUP in that specific paragraph. Yes. Mm -hmm. First grading permit. There are right. other locations, by the way, where use permit is included, including that emergency work section. Well, that's what not emergency work. Well, right. Mm -hmm. So perhaps grading that should say grading permit. Right? Any director's use replaced with grading permit. And you might start capitalizing grading permit. Okay, the rest of the director references in that paragraph are to be convinced that it is in fact an emergency. I think that's appropriate, but the, re the reference to the director's use permit should be great under section 109. Understood. Okay. Uh, concurrence on that? Okay. Uh, and then exemptions. Um, staff rewrote exemptions to consolidate all of that at the bottom of page 3 into the italicized paragraph.
Okay. Then your additional discussion topics, there was a re uh, comment from the audience about re limiting the state agencies to those two, uh, Cal Fire and Fish and Wildlife. I kind of like that idea, personally. Can you kind of like that idea. I kind of really like that. I think that sends a bad message for myself. Yeah. How so? Well, I mean, if you were an employee of another agency, you would feel discriminated against. Okay. <laughs> if I could speak to that, please. Uh, four or one permits, it's not just uh, stormwater uh, pollution prevention plans that was mentioned that would apply under the water board, but also four or one permits, or potentially four or four permits with the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, and if the intention of the comment was that uh, CAL FIRE exemptions, uh, conversion exemptions, would not would be exempt, then I, I do not agree with that. I still think that those oh, should, I'm as long as I'm just trying to make that clear, CAL FIRE really would not have a lot to say about grading operations unless there was an exemption in place. So calling them out specifically uh, could potentially muddy the water of the role of CAL FIRE and whether or not vehicle conversions are an exemption or not. Uh, CAL FIRE would also be involved if you had a THP on the property, which would lead to grading that would be over the threshold. Very true, yes. And those are specifically exempt. They are called out specifically as an exemption. To our permit. Correct. Okay. Was there anything else on the additional discussion topics? So you want to do this guy? We didn't reach a conclusion. Was there any action in your I, I actually would like clarification on the three acre conversion um, <laughs> discussion where you specifically said digging stumps. Um, in some cases, that might be a part of the three acre conversion, and it, then would it be exempt? Or it, are, you, are you only talking about stuff that occurs after the three acre conversion is done? Uh, anything that CAL FIRE would allow under the conversion exemption should be allowed. It is, would be abiding by the California uh, Forest Practice Rules, and it's a written exemption under CEQA. It's a conversion of less than three acres. That should all be okay. If stumps are part of that, as determined by CAL FIRE staff, such as you're digging a landing or, or a skidding road or whatever it might be, then that is appropriate. What I'm trying to avoid is the idea of going through for whatever bona fide intent was stated for the conversion and expanding that to something that doesn't meet that intent, such as doing a field break, removing merchantable timber, and then removing all of the stumps with heavy equipment. That is not necessary for a field break. And so the intent doesn't meet up with what Cal Fire understood in their paperwork. The intent becomes something different. And I believe the grading ordinance should apply in that situation. If Cal Fire determines that that exemption or that conversion is for another purpose, and if we look at that project and we concur, then I think the grading ordinance should apply. If a homeowner has any confusion about what they're doing, then they should be contacting Cal Fire or they should be contacting us to verify before their activity whether or not this ordinance would apply. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. No because one of the exemptions you can get for theory conversion is to convert from forest to agriculture, which requires taking all the stumps. Uh, yes, that would be a bona fide intent, unless it contradicts the planning department policy if the agricultural uh, practice is for cannabis specifically. You could do another agricultural purpose, yes, but if it's specifically cannabis, there are uh, procedures in place in the planning department. So it's a cannabis grade. So is there any discussion about the discussion topics? Further discussion, thank you. I, I did want to add to that, if I could, something that I just came up today, honestly, was the idea, and this is for an interpretation from the commission or recommendation for how this should be applied. Uh, if a, an individual is depositing spoils uh, from off-site onto their property, non-native material onto a location that would be greater than the thresholds here uh, described here. My intent is that that is a grading practice. Is 
the deposition was closed. If it's outside of a mining operation or any other exemption, uh, am, am I correct? You mean the, the signs that say fill dirt wanted and they start piling up and it's more than two feet above existing grade? That would only be an agricultural exemption if it was greater than 800 cubic yards or more than 10,000 square feet. Then I interpret that as a grading activity, even if the material if the material specifically came from off-site. If you look toward the definitions of grading, then that, and whereas two and whereas three, uh, and also... Grading and filling and combination thereof. It does say whereas grading is defined as filling. That answer the question. I, I didn't. I didn't want to get into a gray area here, so I'm preemptively asking for your interpretation of it. If you look under Section 2A, also the restrictions of how this ordinance applies, it is uh, the effect contains, involves, consists of a volume of graded material greater than 800 cubic yards, whether contiguous or not contiguous. Uh, I did not say spoils specifically. Well. The other thing I would note now that you said it is that the whereas defines grading, but the ordinance doesn't. Or the ordinance 326, which starts at right above section one. Below that, the definition of grading doesn't appear. There is not a definition section in the ordinance, that's correct. Uh, it was written as the whereas is provided the definition. I guess that's the legislative intent section, Councilor. Does that work? No, yeah, usually there would be a separate. Definition section. Yeah. Correct. And that's where you can clarify that without the interpretation. Correct. Sounds like we have more changes to the <laughs> definition. Definition. See, I told you I talked too much. <laughs> it's a specificity. I would agree. You should have definition section to clarify. Any and all terms used in here with specifically to eliminate those gray areas. But to answer your specific question regarding uh, fill rather from off site, if you're using the whereas as, as your definition, then that qualifies as grading, in, in my opinion. It would be better to have that defined so it's in everyone's opinion, though. We May I include that in the whereas section? <laughs> I, would, uh, I would recommend adding a definition section. Yeah. So, um, did you? I think in our motion we can recommend that you create a definition section. And um, do we agree with the interpretation as it is, Mr. Stewart, that his example of the big fill pile from off site is great? Absolutely. Okay, yes. I agree with that. And we concur that that's not great, that is black and white. Yes. And that we recommend that you add a, next time board takes a run at this, then put a definition section in there. And if they really need us to do that, Send it back to us instead of doing it tonight. Okay. So, did we basically not take any action on the additional discussion topics? Is that I, I was asking, are there, is there any further discussion? Is there any action to be taken? If we do nothing, we haven't really changed. I mean, it's basically staff discretion about whether they're going to. Someone else is getting a permit through one of these other agencies when they choose to say a permit's required, right? Well, the discussion doesn't recommend that such language be added to the ordinance. Are you recommending that such language is codified there? No. I'm okay with the practice. I don't think that yeah. Okay. All right. So anyone else want to discuss the discussion? I'm good. Uh, I, I do have one point I want to bring up uh, under exemptions. Um, it would be page 8 on our staff report under the new letter J. Um, I just want some clarification here. It says access roads and building paths consistent with conditions of approval for subdivision or parcel map approved by public 
works department, planning department, department of transportation. Where does, like, for example, residential projects fall under that? Um, I, I, my concern, and, and, and I, I've heard from someone that they wanted to do a certain amount of grading, but there was some gray area because the residential area was going to be included in that grading, so therefore they would break the 20,000 square foot threshold with the grading they had proposed or envisioned, plus the current uh, permit they have for their residential site. You know, so so they, they fell into that gray area. Um, so so how, how does that get treated? I mean, could, could, re, could a residential site be excluded and can that be specified or, or, or would that fall under the building permit or? or? To, to clarify, it's a residential parcel? Yes. One? I don't want to know all the details. Per that, and that's fair to, to say it here, but my question is, was it a subdivision map or parcel map revision? Because that, that's a standard process that Leslie had mentioned that it would go to engineers in the DOT that would review all of the grading operation plans for roads, pads, everything else, and would go to their director of health for the same thing. Uh, that's a standard process, and that's it was, those plans are checked, and so that's why I wanted to exclude it here. If you are talking about a uh, someone who wishes to grade on their parcel and it is zoned residential of whatever type, uh, this ordinance would still apply. Uh, if they met the thresholds, and including build their building pad, which for which they already have a building permit, is that so? This part of the function of this ordinance. Or let me back up one moment. Is that if they have an existing road that they're grading, that is exempt as well. But if they're building, developing a building pad, this ordinance is filling in a gap where people have gone to a parcel and graded out. Uh, housing pad of whatever, whatever size they're able to do, and then they've applied for the building permit. And the building permit itself doesn't specifically say that that pad has to be constructed to any particular standard. The foundations do, and everything related to that building itself does, but the pad itself and, and the conditions that it was graded under are not addressed. And so this is meant to fill in that gap where people would clear land and then get a building pad permit later. I see, I see. That, that's been a very common practice. Okay. Any other topics at all? Okay. Who wants to make a motion? Supervisors, that we approve the suggested language changes to the restrictions on grading ordinance number 1347 with the, the um, change of 21 calendar, cal adding calendar under 21 to make it 21 calendar days, remove DUP or CUP and make it a grading permit application under the um, time limits on the ordinance. Under emergency work, change director's use permit every place it is used to grading permit. And I think that's it, isn't it? Is that it? And you get the agriculture language and yeah. the exemption language. Oh, yes, and... Uh, uh, the motion was to accept all of their yeah. changes oh, with the changes yes. with, just with the changes okay. that I just said, yes. I think you got it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and add, a, um, add a list of definitions to the ordinance. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Are you good with the motion? Yes. You good, good with the birds, you got it? The tape's got it, Daryl's got it. I think it's pretty straightforward. Exactly. Thank you. 
Um, <laughs> any uh, further discussion? Let's see, is this a roll call? Let's do a roll call. So just name each. Do me last, otherwise it's your trip. Good job, commissioners. That was more interesting than it might have been. And good job, David. Yes. Good job. Appreciate that. And uh, get us through that. Okay, that brings us to matters from the commission. I do have one thing. I um, was very concerned at the EIR, the EIR meeting about the fact that it was advertised as a presentation discussion and informational Q&A. And it was also um, said the word dialogue was used by Director Tippett at the very beginning. When the gentleman from Ascend answered for the first hour virtually every question with the phrase, well, you need to put that in writing, or the phrase that, um, well, the definition or, or all the, the mitigations were, were based on the program and did not answer any specific questions. That's not a dialogue. It's not a conversation. It's not a question and answer. The first time anybody got a really straight answer was when David said that, well, the program is the 530. And, uh, and while I applaud you for saying that, I have some issues with that statement, but, but I, I thank you for that. After that, Shortly after that, I had to leave, and I hope that it got better. I have a feeling it didn't, but I think everybody there came away very frustrated with the fact that it was not a dialogue, it was not a discussion. Even, even questions as to the structure of the EIR were not answered, and as far as I'm concerned, it's not acceptable. Um, anybody else? And I know it's not I'll um, raise my concern that the, the same issue with the, the draft EIR um, meeting in District 5. I brought up with staff before the meeting that uh, the notices didn't arrive in the mail until the 24th when the meeting was on the 22nd. Uh, that was my biggest issue with the EIR meeting in Madriver. Okay. Uh, I probably will not be able to attend the meeting on July 11th. Is that the next meeting? Yes. I'll be working on that week only. Just as an FYI. Richard? I will be out of town on August 8th and probably August 22nd, so I'm not sure about the second one yet. Definitely I'll be out on the 8th of August. I almost certainly will be out of town on, on August 22nd. 22nd? So I've heard rumors that the EIR is headed in here as possibly as early as August. Is that, yeah. were you planning yeah. regular yeah. meetings or? I've also heard it could take two or three nights. Is that consecutive meetings, or is that you plan on three nights in a row? Yeah, I was going to speak to that under matters for staff, okay. but I can, I can... Why don't you go ahead, then. We're at matters for staff. Okay. Uh, regarding the timeline for what we see, the big things that we see coming, um, we've come up with a tentative timeline for the planning commission meetings to hear the draft DIR and the ordinance. 
tentatively we were looking at two days, August 21st and 22nd. If it looks like you're all not going to be here, then we will work with that timeline. We were trying to verify whether or not we would have, um, we're thinking we're gonna use a different venue than here. We think our, that it's gonna be necessary to go to Trinity Alps Performing Arts Center. Um, if that timing doesn't work, Graham, and you know you're not gonna be here, then we will work with the timeline because we felt, uh, I think it's important that you're all here. Would that be the soonest it could happen? Or, because earlier in the August I could be around, but uh, you know, I'll have to look. We chose those dates for a reason, but I'll, I'll look to see if we have any flexibility to go sooner, um, later yesterday, but and I'll I, check on I won't be here on the 8th, and there's a chance I won't be here on the 22nd as well. These will be evening. Uh, do you have a strong preference? We need, we know we're going to have long meetings. Uh, we could either go earlier in the evening, begin around 5 p.m., um, maybe 4 p.m. There's some flexibility there. I wanted to get some guidance from you regarding the timing. I was just trying to get the dates nailed down. Well, in general, I would personally be flexible on a, on a 4 versus 6 or 7 or 5 or something like that. So. But the, the question I, that raises in my mind is the public's act. Uh, yeah. Are they available to get work and come? But as well as commissioners that have jobs. As well as commissioners with day jobs. So but. five p.m. would be more realistic, and then you just kind of raise yourself for a fairly long evening. Yes, you're bringing pizza. Right? Okay, uh, you'll get some correspondence from me uh, via email or phone to verify this within the next probably tomorrow. Do we all have yeah. copies of that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Hard copies of that. And that's really what helpful. Is, what do the comments do? Twelve. 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 And do you expect to get? Uh, you know, some we'll of them trickling down. We'll be reviewing the full document and including the response to comments, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot of effort out of that. Yes. I'd be impressed if it fits into two nights. Yeah. Uh, well, and if that's something that you anticipate, we can do a third, reserve a third day kind of as a placeholder. That's what we're doing for the board meeting. I, I believe we will need a third day. It's going to be a very popular subject and okay. well attended, I would guess, and lots of commentary, which is all good. I'll get back to the calendar then. Have you given any thought to how those days would be structured? Yes. So would it be on specific topics for a given evening or just? No, of course we'll start with the public hearing, um, and uh, hold on for that. We will let you know that there there is a structure. Yes. Um, now, if we're going to put a third day into it, that might change a little bit. So, do you want to speak to that at all? Uh, not at this point. No. Yeah. Recommendations would be great. But, uh, I expect that uh, Ascent will be here. Uh, Pat Angel from Ascent, who is a Principal, uh, author, uh, I expect you will be here to present. Anything more regarding that? Um, okay, so I would like to give you a little bit of an overview um, regarding what we have going in the planning department right now and with cannabis. Um, in cannabis, we have around 40 variances. The compliance team has been trying to talk people out of variances. Of course, that indicates that something's going on that, you know, and it's not normal to have that many variances. So uh, we're working on that for right now. It is what it is. And when we revisit the ordinance, maybe that's going to be the soonest time that we can really address it fully. I do have a question. You mentioned the EIR and the ordinance. What is that ordinance that you're talking about? Um, what we are doing is proposing the EIR for the county's cannabis program, and then at the same time, on the heels of that, combining all the different cannabis ordinances into one ordinance. Okay. Okay. Good. That, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, so licensing, we're continuing on in cannabis, continuing on, of course, with our licensing. We're in the low 300s right now. Um, 
making sure that all renewals, we're trying to get our renewals process as early as we can because we're anticipating that once we gain a little bit more momentum with the EIR and also combining the ordinance along with some revisions, we're thinking that we're not going to have, um, you know, staff is going to be very busy taking care of that. So we're working on messaging, like I said, to get the renewals in, get them taken care of. Um, inspections are continuing out in the field. We have, uh, we've been asked to come up with a report regarding, or an assessment regarding variances. So that was asked during the last meeting. At this point, I am assuming that we would cover it in our new approach to the ordinance. It seems to make sense at that time. That looks like it's going to be, as I said, it was going to be scheduled around the third week of August. Is that okay with you? It, I don't think anybody would gain anything from looking at it. Earlier. You mean postponing any agendizing anything about those kinds of changes to the ordinance until we actually do the ordinance after the EIR? That does make sense to me. The um, ordinance itself, is that part of the two or three day thing? Yes. Oh, so. Certifying the EIR and then looking at the ordinance. Okay. Then you really better do three days. I love your optimism. Yeah. We do a whole week. <laughs> um, okay, so in the planning department, you know, we're kind of running side by side. Cannabis is definitely still taking over everything. You know, if you, I encourage all of you at any time to come into the planning department. You know, between 8 and 2, sometimes you come in and it's like the floor of Wall Street. It is happening. It is a very, very busy place. I appreciate that some members of the audience have said staff is overwhelmed. Yes. Okay, I get 150 emails a day, standard. It's not doable. I am letting you know it's not sustainable. Um, staff is doing, I think, you know, we're covering bases as well as we can. Um, we coordinate, you know, I, standard thing, we coordinate with other departments, other agencies, we have a lot of meetings that are mandatory, you know, could we cut some of that out to try to produce better work products? I want to give you good work products. Um, I. I guess we could try to do some of that, and then we lose the benefit of the course of the clear communication with other departments or agencies. So I've been hesitant to do that. I try to have personal meetings with people that are either um, in the process of a planning project or that have a license pending, uh, because that communication seems to be very valuable. So if you have a different view on um, how you think staff could invest time to be more productive, and we're completely game for that. But my concern is that um, right now, it is very, very hard to get something done start to finish um, without the process changing somewhere um, along the way. You know, there were comments made about CUPs taking a long time to process. I do keep a communication log for all the CUPs just so I can go back and verify that, hey, I don't want anything to sit with me um, or with any of our staff members. Sometimes these things just take a long time. By the time people get their studies done, it's six months in longer than they thought it would be. So um, we do use SHN as a consultant. We try to use them just specifically for project work, so they're not doing any of the administrative, we want them to be billable, basically. If somebody comes in and it's a project and we can bill to that project, um, that is what we want them, how we want to use them. Um, it is in a contract that they can function as an extension of planning staff, so you know, administratively, uh, we could plug them in. We're going to start using them for variances. So far, we haven't used them for variances. We've been concentrating more on conditional use permits, whether they're for cannabis or other projects. We've been using them more for conditional use permits because they can write the secret document. And the secret documents take a long time. And staff just does not have the 
the time or the ability to do it. And we're working on a fee study for cannabis. There's still the noise assessment that we are supposed to come back to, um, to you with the, or to the board, I'm sorry, with a, no, it is to you, I'm sorry. It's to you. With Mountain Community Healthcare District's you know, clinic expansion. Um, we have the general, uh, general plan update RFP that we've started on, housing element reports, um, we have a number of larger, pro larger projects that are in the hopper right now, and <laughs> trying to turn most of those over to SHN so they can do that project work. Uh, Reading Ranch Rio, for example, that's a good example of the larger project. They recently had an outreach event here in town. Uh, they're thinking of doing a healthcare campus down in the Trinity Office Business Park. So that's an example of the other types of projects that we have. And there's a large affordable housing project that we're talking about. It's taking some time to deal with that right now. Um, we have the standard suite of staff reports, mandatory training, sexual harassment training, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's constantly busy. And the effort is not at all to um, disregard the discontent that the public feels toward the planning department right now because they're frustrated. I feel like it, we're really, um, honestly, I feel like it's a disservice to the public in many ways that it takes so long to turn things around. Given the staff numbers that we have right now, it's pretty much unavoid it's unavoidable. Uh, all we can do is try to uh, look at July 8th as a nice new date when we get a new planning slash building director. She'll be walking in the door. Rick Tibbet is going to be phasing out of cannabis um, <coughs> after we get through the CIR process, but it didn't really seem like a fair thing to put this new planning director in the position of being in the middle of a process. So Rick will be in place as the director of planning through that process, and then uh, still our new planning director will be overseeing the planning projects. So we hope that the planning projects that have been stalled out for a while, certificates of compliance, parcel maps, um, other projects that uh, are very distant from cannabis because cannabis has been taking over everything. We're hoping to regain momentum with those things. Can I ask a question? And, and I understand everything that, that you're dealing with, I truly do. Um, but I'm just, was the um, not noticing the zoning change just an oversight? Yes, I'm sure it was. Because there really can't be if that's to be part of it. Well, I've answered my own questions right now. And I think that that's part of a, you know, that's yes, one of the byproducts yeah. of, you yeah. know, had a lot of it was literally, this staff yeah. report was literally going out the door as I was, as I was walking out the door to one of the five public meetings for the EIR. Yeah. And, you know, I, I certainly don't want to be in crisis management mode because this is the type of product that it, that results and it is kind of choosing which fire to put out. We hope to have that change. Like I said, with having a new director in the building, um, you know, Rick has done his best from a distance. He just has many hats and he's working on some very, very large projects right, right now, like the jail. Um, we're hoping that that will separate things a little bit more. We have eight people on staff for cannabis right now. Um, everybody is, has now had their job for about six months at least, so they know what they're doing. There is a learning curve for sure. And they're settling in pretty well. Uh, I don't want to be the gatekeeper, and so we have switched over to a case management model with our cannabis cultivation licensees. So somebody is assigned one of the code compliance specialists. If any issues come up regarding their site, that's their person that they speak with so that I'm not the funnel. Good. 
and then any, any one person is not in that position. Okay. How many planning staff are not in cannabis? Like staff that working on such, are there any? One. 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 Ruth. Although, you know, once a project is routed as a planning project, like the CUPs, those are planning projects. Even though it's a cannabis <clears throat> use permit, it's not, um, it's a process that has been established through planning. So it is handled, um, she's the only one. We really try to keep her out of cannabis uh, because we found just the nature of it is once you start to get involved, it's really difficult not to recognize how many things need to be done and that starts taking up time. Bella is hired through planning, but you know, she's really, a lot of her time is spent on cannabis. Okay, well thank you for that briefing. That's mm -hmm. and I don't feel like interesting it's job that the new guy, new lady is stepping into, the direct, new director yeah. is stepping into. Yeah. Uh, and I don't an opportunity. Yeah, I, I think we lobby with our prospective supervisors to get you help, but I don't know where that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. Is there anything else you want to share? Yeah. Right. Any other comments or reactions? Or well done with that rosy picture, I think we're adjourned.